Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about print on demand everything. So if that is a subject that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can create these personalized tumblers that you can list on sites such as Etsy or any other platform that you're selling on. So right now I am on my Etsy listing. Um, and so you can see kind of exactly what I did starting over here with sort of your, you know, title tags for Etsy SEO. You're going to want to have titles that are similar to what you think people would actually search for. So my title went personalized Tumblr, custom name, skinny Tumblr with straw gift for her customizable stainless steel Tumblr. 20 ounce travel mug. So that was the title that I decided to go with. Um, I made this thumbnail right here and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make this thumbnail by the way, to show off all of the different colors. Over here um, for ordering, you can select the color that you want. You can see a few of these are sold out right now, but once they're back in stock, that will go away, but it shows you the different options. And then down here, you would type in your you know, personalization. So whatever name or word or whatever somebody wanted on the mug. Now, when you got an order for this, it would come to you in an email from Etsy and it would tell you what personalization that person wanted. And so when you go then to fulfill their order, you would simply go to the order on whichever site you're using. So I'm gonna show you this on Printify. You would have to go to their order and just edit their order and upload the new print file that you create with whatever their custom word is. And so I'll kind of try to go over that a little bit more for you guys so that you can see. Um, so for the entire listing, obviously I've got all of the colors. I'm gonna have some close-ups that'll show you kind of what the lid looks like lid and straw there and then just some of the individual colors so, so as I go through my listing there you can see some of the individual colors and then at the very bottom I'm gonna have my therapy designs logo um, just to remind them of my shop and you know hopefully they will come and buy more things uh, from my shop and so that is what the listing looks like and so if I was to go to my listing page on Etsy so I'm just gonna move over this is the actual listing where you would put it and edit it. So you should be familiar with this listing page. Here is where you would upload your photos and videos. Now, typically when you make a listing using Printify or Printful, it will automatically upload some mockups for you in here. You can always change these mockups and I do recommend changing them. So what you can do, any mockup that you don't want, you can just delete and then any clear space, you can click and upload your own mockups and that's how you would get all of your own mock-ups here onto your listing. And so I've got my title right, my personalized mock-ups down here. Um, it's gonna come with a description, usually in the print company, whichever print company you use, will have a description for you. You can add to that description at the bottom. I add down here to let them know that it's print on demand. I put this product is made especially for you as soon as you place an order, which is why it takes us a bit longer to deliver it to you. Making products on demand instead of in bulk helps reduce overproduction. So thank you for making uh, thoughtful purchasing decisions. And then I put message me for custom designs or gifts so that they know that they can always, you know, try to order other things. Um, this little um, blurb is now optional um, if you go through Printful but they don't have this on Printify. So I just copied and pasted it and put it on all my Printify listings as well. Um, as you come down here, this is where you would select for personalization. So you'd always put personalization optional and then you put your instructions. So I put enter the name you want shown and select white or black text. So I'll offer either one and I put examples so like the name Kelly comma white and that's the text. And so that would be their personalization. Here is where you would click if you wanted a personalization to be optional. Now, I didn't click that because this is the kind of item where everybody's going to pick something personal unless their name just happens to be Sophia. Um, but there are ones where you can make personalization optional, but I really don't want it to be optional. I want them to tell me exactly what they want. 
And the reason I did white and black text, by the way, is if you were to come back up here and you see the different colors, the white text I decided really didn't show up well on these two lighter color tumblers. So I decided to offer a dark text for those two tumblers. And of course, if somebody was to message me and say, hey, can I have pink or a different color text, I would you know, be more than willing to do that for them. So just let people know, especially in your shop, if you do offer personalization that they can, you know, customize anything. And so with that in mind, I'm gonna show you guys how to go about doing this. I apologize in advance, it will be a little bit of a longer video because there was a lot of steps involved, not only in, you know, making the listing, but then in making the mock-up actually it took me a while too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to uh, Printify and show you what product this is. So when I go over to my Printify page and I'm on catalog, if you go to the left, it says catalog, you can click that and we're gonna go to home and living. And then you can go down to where you see bottles and tumblers. And now they have a lot of different bottles and tumblers that you can use. And so obviously you can design for any one of these types of products if you want them in your store. I happen to know that skinny tumblers are very you know, popular right now, which is why I went for that. Um, I did like this tumbler here too, because it's all over print, which means it will print the entire thing. So you can select any color background you want or put any pattern on it and it'll print the whole thing, as opposed to some of these where you'll still get sort of that white lip around the edge or here it only prints just in the middle portion. And so you can keep that in mind when you're looking at all of these, whether or not it prints the entire product or whether or not it just prints a small portion of the product whether or not the product is solid versus clear. If you've got a clear product and you don't use a background color, well then you will be able to see through it and it may not show up as well on your mock-up. So all things to consider. So as I scroll down here, I'm gonna show you the product that I finally got to is towards the bottom. And this is the one that I'm showing you here, which is the skinny tumbler and it comes in these different colors. And what I did like about this is it does have a lid that can close. So it's got the straws, it's got the little lid that can slide closed and the lid will match the tumbler. So will the straw. Now, right next to it is a very similar design from the same brand. And this one is an all over print, which means you can select any color you want as a background for the design. So quite literally, if you made your design with any color of the rainbow, you could get any color of the rainbow you wanted, but the straw, um, is going to be white and this does not have that slide top. Then they're about the same price point. So I was going to pick this one here, but you could do this one here as well. So it just depends kind of what you want to do. I did like the kind of colored on the top and, and the straw being colored. So that's why I went with this one. So let's go ahead and select this. And so we can see that it is right down here, seven colors, 20 ounce. Shipping's kind of expensive, though you'll get that for all the stainless steel ones. It is gonna be a little bit more expensive than some of the other tumblers that are just plastic or whatnot. So this one is, you know, um, insulated and it will keep drinks cold and it is stainless steel, so it's a little bit more pricey. But if we were to go ahead and go over to start designing and we can scroll down to the bottom. Now you might not be able to see this if, if my head's in the way, but it'll give you the print file requirements and it will tell you down here, like the print area size in pixels. And so it'll give you, this is 2,757 by 2,260,000, or sorry, 67 pixels. So if you are designing for this, you are looking at 2757 by 2267 pixels. And so with that in mind, I'm gonna jump over to Etsy and we'll go ahead and show you how you would design sort of for this. So I'm gonna jump, sorry, not Etsy. I'm gonna jump right over to Canva. <laughs> so I am on Canva and I am going to be creating a custom size here. And we will be going with the dimensions that I just mentioned over um, on your um, Printify shop. So those dimensions were, 2757 by 2267. And we'll go ahead and hit create a new design. And so here is your dimensions. Now, this is an all over print. So if I wanted to create a full pattern 
I could. If I wanted to select a background color, I could really select any background color I wanted, but then it wouldn't necessarily match the lid and the straw. So if I go with a clear background, um, so that I can have the cup the same color as the, the straw and the lid, and just go ahead and put text here for the name, which is what I showed you in the example, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit T on my keyboard, pull up a text box. Now you can use any name you want as an example. Obviously this is personal, personalizable. I went with Sophia. Again, you can do anything you want, but there is my Sophia. <clears throat> now you can pick any font that you want, and some people do offer choices of font where you can offer them several different choices. The font that I showed you in the example that I had listed was a font that I got off of Creative Fabrica and it was called Lucky. So if I go up to my fonts and I go ahead and do a search for Lucky and it is Lucky Regular, that is the font that I showed you. Now you may recall that on the listing it had a nice little tail to the letter there. And so that is one thing that's really fun that you'll see on a lot of different fonts are those sort of little um, font glyphs. Now I did do a video, by the way, on font glyphs um, from Creative Fabrica. And if you haven't seen that, uh, go to my channel um, and search for it for the Creative Fabrica font glyphs. But I'm gonna show you really quickly um, how you can do it here. So if I was to go up to Creative Fabrica, and you can do this with any font that you want that you download from Creative Fabrica. So I downloaded that lucky font from Creative Fabrica. And then I'm going to go over to Tools and I'm going to use Font Cloud. So that is the tool that I'm going to be using right here. And I'm gonna open Font Cloud. And so this is uh, Font Cloud opened and up here is where you would be able to download various fonts. So if I had just downloaded um, Lucky from Creative Fabrica, I could come up here and I could upload Lucky to my font cloud. And so you just hit, you know, browse and you can drop your fonts in. So here is my Lucky font here on the side. And when you click that, it is going to show all of the different font glyphs that do not, um, they didn't automatically upload to Canva when you uploaded the font, but they do exist here. And so it's really easy. You can sort of start scrolling down and different fonts will have different font glyphs. And so it'll show you the upper cases, the lower cases, some of the special symbols, and then you can see these, those opening and trailing lines. So you can see the opening lines there. And as we come down the trailing lines here. So for my design, I used the name Sophia as an example, and it ends in an a, and so I wanted that trailing A look. So to get that, all I have to do is literally just click the A. Now you can't see it, but it's saved to a clipboard now. And so now I would just jump right back over to my design on Canva. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the A and I'm going to paste the new A that I had saved to my clipboard. So all you're gonna do is right click and you're gonna hit paste and it will paste that A on. And so again, anytime you want to add a font glyph, you just go over to your font cloud, you click on whichever one that you want, and you will then paste it, you know, where you want in your Word. Um, so if I wanted an opening, you know, line for the S, for example, I could go ahead and find the opening line for the S, which is right here, I could just click it, I could go back to my design if I really wanted to, highlight the S and go ahead and just hit paste. And now I've got an opening and a trailing line. Now I didn't necessarily want to do that because I do like the capital S. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back, but I did want to show you how you would do that. So now I have my text. Now I do want it to be vertical because the way I had it on the Tumblr was to go up and down like that. And you can really put it anywhere. This is a wrap around. I put it right in the middle that way on the mockups. You know, it, it can be seen. So a lot of the mockups will do a straight, you know, from the front mockup. And so I want it to be seen right in the middle. So if you center your word, it'll look good just like that. Now, again, I'm going to use the color of the tumbler itself. So I'm going to use a transparent background. So for my example here, I'm gonna want a black Sophia and I'm going to want a white Sophia and I'll show you why. So all I'd have to do here, this is my black one, would be to duplicate this page. So now I've got two pages. 
for this one, I'm going to go ahead, change my background color to a darker color so I can see, and then change this Sophia to white. So now I have a white Sophia and a black Sophia, and I'm going to have to use these for the mock-ups. Keep in mind that this is all about the mock-ups because when you get an order, you're going to have to redo this with the person's name. So you would just go right back over here, and whether they wanted white or black, I would just go to either one of them, and then I could just duplicate the page and just edit this to include the person's name. So this is Sophia. Let's say that they ordered, I'm just going to go with my name, Kelly, and they wanted it in black on one of the lighter colors. So I would take this, I would duplicate it, I would come here, I would go ahead, I'd probably go ahead and turn it so I can see it real quick. I would change this then to my name. I would go over to the font cloud, find my trailing Y, which is right here, click it, go back here, highlight my Y, just the Y, oops, just the Y, and then go ahead and hit paste. And there's Kelly, and then I would turn it like that. I could resize it if I needed to, since it's a shorter name. The longer names, you'll have to kind of shrink down. Shorter names, you might want to do that and there. And so then I would download this, and that would be what I would use for their order. So for right now, what we're really doing is just making mock-ups, because um, you know what we're going to do for a person's personalizable order is going to be done when they order it. So for right now, just for our mock-ups, I'm going to want uh, Sophia in black, and I'm going to want Sophia in white for my mock-ups. So, so I'll just title this right here, and I'll put Sophia, and I'll put black, and I'll go down here, and I'll title this one Sophia, and I'll put white. And I'm going to download both of these with a transparent background. So I can hit share, go down to download. It's a PNG. You do need it to have a transparent background. And we're going to do this one page at a time. So we're just going to start with page one, which is the Black Sophia, and hit Done and Download. And so it will download that one. And then we're going to now repeat the process for the white one. So we're going to go back up to Share, Download, Transparent Background again. And this time it is going to be page three. Oops, page three. Done and Download. And so now that we have that, we can go ahead and jump over to our Printify. And so here I am on my Printify. And let's go ahead and do the dark colors first. So since I'm on the dark one, we'll just do the dark colors. So what I'm going to do is come up to the top, add design from, and you're going to click my device. If you click that, it should pull up your downloads. So if you're not, make sure you go over to your downloads and go ahead and select the Sophia White or whatever name that you chose and give it a second and it will pull that up and it will put it right there. And you can adjust where it is and the size and all that too, if you need to. And then you can go to preview and you can see what this is going to look like. And so there we have our preview. And so it's showing it from the front. And so Sophia right there, and it'll give you a left, a back, a right view, a bottom view, close up. I won't use all of these. I'll definitely use the front, the close up, the open. So those are the ones that I'm definitely going to use. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to put my own in and I'm going to do this for different colors. So right now it is just showing it on deep teal. So what I would do is come to edit and let's go ahead, select. And let's pick all of the darker colors. So pretty much everything but the sea glass and the dusty blue. Those two I'm going to want the black text for. So now that I have those, I can go back to preview and it's got all of my options here for me. Now this is where it takes a little bit of time because we're going to do this for our mock-up. So to make our mock-up, what I want is pretty much a picture of every single one of these in each color. So if I was starting here with black, I see this mock-up right here. What I'm going to do is right click on the mock-up and I'm going to go where it says save image as. So a little box should pop up. You can hit save image as um, and then you will save that and you can save it to your downloads, to your documents. You can pick where you want it and I would put Sophia and then black tumbler, right? Something like that. And I'd hit save. Now I'm going to do this for every single one of these. So now I would go up to the next one and the next one is pine and needle. And I would do the same thing. I would right click on it. I would save image as, 
and I'm going to put Sophia. And this one I'm going to do, we'll put Pine, and I'll hit Save. And I'll go to the next one, and this is the Deep Teal. And repeat the process. Save Image as Sophia and Teal. And you would keep going and do all of them. And then what we're gonna have to do is now do it for the lighter colors. So to do the lighter colors, I'm gonna go back to edit. This time I'm going to uh, delete the Sophia White. And I'm gonna go ahead and add from my device, the Sophia Black. And it's gonna pull up the black version. And so there's that black version there. And now I'm gonna switch the colors. So I'm gonna go over to where colors are and I'm gonna hit select. And this time I'm gonna be selecting the light colors, but not the darker colors. So there are my light colors. And I'm gonna to go to preview again. And then from here, I'm just gonna do the same process. So I'm gonna start with my first one, which is my sea glass. So that's kind of a little bit of a greenish color. And so here's my sea glass. And again, I'm just going to right click, save image as, and I'm gonna put Sophia, and I'm gonna put the uh, sea glass. And then one more time for the dusty blue, same thing. I'm gonna right click on my dusty blue image, hit save image, save it as Sophia dusty blue, and hit save. So now I have all of those images saved in order to create my thumbnails. Now I do still have to create the listing. And so typically for the listing, I'm gonna have all my own thumbnails for each of these bottles. The only thumbnails that I'm gonna keep from the original thumbnails are going to be probably the close-up and maybe the open lid. And so with that in mind, for the close-up and the open lid, you're gonna pick whichever color or style you think looks best. So if I think, hey, this is likely to sell more for somebody buying the pink one, I think the pink one's the one I'm gonna to go to as my main image, you know, no problem here. I can go ahead and select my pink and you can offer the pink in the white or the black. Maybe I think, uh, I think it would have looked better with the white. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna to go to my library since I've already downloaded it and I can just select the white version. And so now I'm making my listing. And for my listing, I want to include all of these. So these are all going to be included in my listing. And so from here, all I have to do is go to Save Product. So first, it's going to ask you to sort of select your mock-ups. Remember, we're going to change most of these mock-ups on Etsy. So I'm just trying to get a, a couple of, of sort of the main close-up ones. So I'm gonna come down here and first I'm gonna pick the color. So I decided that I wanted the pink color to be kind of my main one. And so if I wanted to add the close-up view, I put add view and I wanna add the open view. I'll hit add view on that one for the open view. And eh, there's that context, there's that context, there's a bottom. Really these are the only two that I kind of wanna use from here that are a little bit different is the close-up view there and the open view there. Beyond that, I'm gonna make all of my own mock-ups with these cups and with the different color text too. So I don't have to worry about that. So I can just go ahead, I can unclick this by the way, I don't need to add those views at all. Don't need to add those views at all. It's automatically going to do that. But what I can do is select this as my title image, get rid of that one. So now the only images that are gonna actually add to my Etsy listing are the ones that I have checked, which is the close-up and the open. So none of the other mock-ups are gonna add, I'm gonna add my own. So just these two, I can hit that one as the close-up and I've uh, selected the pink as sort of my main image. So that's what I'm gonna go with there. So then you would scroll down, you would go ahead and put your title, which, you know, I had done my title as like personalized um, Tumblr or personalized skinny tumb Tumblr, customized name Tumblr, custom name Tumblr, you know, personalized um, stainless steel Tumblr, whatever you want to, you got 140 characters. So go ahead and try to use, you know, all of them or as close to all of them as you can to create your title. You've got your description, which you can add to or edit in any way that you want. Remember, I do add that little extra blurb, but I can do that in my Etsy listing, so I don't necessarily have to do that here. Um, I automatically assign a new shipping profile, and I'll make them pay for shipping. That way I don't have to add that to the you know price. So then I come down here and I'm picking pricing. I'm gonna have the same pricing for all of them. And so it will you know, give you a suggested retail price based on a profit margin of 40%. And so you can price it however you want it. I think I priced a little bit cheaper than that. When we're doing Etsy, if your shop 
offers the free shipping on orders of $35 or more, then you have to keep the price under $35. Otherwise, you're paying for free shipping and the cost of shipping is $7.79. So, you know, you have to kind of take everything into consideration when coming up with your price. I think I offered mine. Let me go ahead and check. $32.99 is what I put. And I came up with that, I think, because $32.99, if I put that here, it was cheap enough that it's under $35, so they pay for shipping, so I don't have to worry about the shipping at all. The profit margin is just over 10 bucks. So you figure if Etsy takes, you know, maybe like four bucks and that gives you like six bucks, it depends whether or not you're paying for advertising too. So just to make sure I get a good profit margin, I used I usually try to make sure I get at least a $10 profit margin in because um, I know some of that's gonna go to marketing and some of that is going to go to Etsy. Um, and so $32.99 was a good price, made sure I made a profit, made sure that they still paid for the shipping, because if I pay for the shipping, I'm gonna have to up the price of the product. And so that is how I came up with that number. Once you have that set, you would come down here. I selected show in stock variants as available and out of stock variants as sold out. That's what I clicked is this one versus showing only in stock variants and they don't even show the other ones. I wanted people to see the sold out ones um, because it just looks better. <laughs> and so best for SEO opt optimization, click mockups, and then what you can do is go ahead and publish this to your Etsy shop by hitting publish. And then you would go over to your Etsy listing and it would have all of the information that you just did and you would have to then add in your, it'll, it'll come up with, with uh, this picture or this picture because these are the two that you added. You'll have to add in your own mockups and you will have to add in the personalization and you will have to add in the tags. So this is all the stuff that you would do once you get to your listing. And I did go ahead and add in materials, metal and capacities, 20 fluid ounces. And I did add in my tags down here, which were personalized tumbler, personalized gift, custom gift, name, skinny tumbler, stainless steel, insulated gift, customizable, things like that. And so that is what we would have to do for the listing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I came up with these mock-ups. And so why I had to download all of the different versions that we did so that we could make this main mock-up right here, which shows off all of the colors, which you will notice if you look around Etsy for tumblers, most of the main images will show off the different colors so that people know what's available um, if they're going to click on your, your, your listing. So let's go ahead and go back over to Canva. So I'm back on Canvas homepage and I'm gonna go ahead and just select, we're gonna do just kind of thumbnail size. And so when I'm doing my thumbnails, I usually just do 4,000 by 4,000. So 4,000 by 4,000 and create new. And so here is my basic thumbnail. So we're gonna have to do a few things. We're gonna have to come up with a background and then we're gonna have to get all of our um, all of our little bottles that we downloaded on here. So I can start with background, that's easy enough. I can go up to elements and I searched table background is what I did, but you can search table background, you can do like Tumblr mock-up background. There's, there's all sorts of different ways that you can go about searching this. Wood background depends what you want. I went with photos and there are a lot of different photo backgrounds that you can use. And so I actually had one photo that I used for the group um, and then one photo that I used for each of the individual tumblers. And so you can kind of scroll through here and see how you can find lots of different fun table designs that you can use for one or more than one of the tumblers. So for example, I could do something like this, you know, blow it up nice and big like that. And this could be the table that I use for one individual tumbler. So if I wanted this to be, right, something like that looks cool. And that can be my background for just my individual tumblers because I'm gonna have to do those one at a time. And then add page and I can do another one for my grouping. And so what I did for the grouping was actually one that had more of an abstract background. So it was this one right here. So it had the wood table, but then it sort of had this, this, this two-tone backdrop, 
which I thought kind of looked cool for what I was doing with the grouping so I could put some text and whatnot and you can you know decide where you want that angle to line up and so I did something along those lines there so that is my going to be my group of tumblr background and that's going to be my individual tumblr background and so now what we are going to do is you're going to have to go to your upload section and we are going to have to upload each of those individual mockups that we got off of um, Printify. So I'll show you that. Okay, so once I have uploaded each of the mockups that I got off of um, Printify, you can see them here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop them onto here and I'm gonna do a background remover. And so I'm gonna just kind of have them lined up the way that I showed you in my original design. So this first one, which was sort of that sort of dark navy blue, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna hit edit photo and we're just gonna do a background remover and perfect. And so there it is. So now we've got bottle number one and I'm gonna bring in the sides just so it's easier to grab but I'll put it down there and then we just repeat the process for each of these. So I'm gonna take number two, edit photo, background remover, bring in the sides, there we go. Next, number three, edit photo, background remover, Bring in those sides there, move it out of the way, keep going. Green, edit photo, background remover, drop in those sides again. Move this one out of the way. And there we go. So now I have each one of these mugs and I've done a background remover and so we can see them all here. And so now you can line them up however you want, straight across, random. I did a little V-shape, which I thought was kind of cool, where I put sort of the darker ones on one side, the lighter ones on another side. And so I think I had like sort of that navy blue one sort of smack dab in the middle and towards the back. And then I sort of, the teal and the dark green are pretty close to one another, but I lined them up something like this and then something like this. So three on either side. And so that looks kind of cool right there. And so then what I did is I had each one in front of the other. So to, to, to do with the layers, you're just gonna take each layer and just hit control and your right bracket will bring it to the front and control and right bracket. You might have to hit that a couple of times for this one, control in your right bracket. And so now I have them overlapping where the ones here are in the front and the one in there is in the back and you can kind of see the way that lines up. If you're not sure if you have these lined up really well, if you hit Shift R on your keyboard, it will pull up your rulers and guides. With your rulers and guides, you can just pull down a nice line to make sure that the bottles are lined up. So those ones are lined up, come up to the next ones, look pretty lined up up to the next one eh, pretty lined up and then you got your middle one and so those are actually pretty lined up uh, i can take the middle one here if i wanted to maybe move it down so that it's not hovering over the other ones quite as much but you can see how that looks something like that and you can play with it all you want and then what i did is i went ahead and put some text here Oops, I hit T on my keyboard, pulls up a text box, put the text box here, and what this one said was personalized, and then tumblers. And I put that here, and then you know you can pick a font, pick um, a color, and so I went ahead and I just did a font called Alike, and you can do any font you like. And change all that, there we go. And then for colors, you can stick with black. I think I had mine at a really dark navy blue, something to match that that initial mug right there. So I can do that and go with sort of a darker navy blue or even a lighter navy blue, depending on what I like. And make it big. And I can even bring the tumblers up a little bit by going to the spacing section with the up and down arrow and bringing that line spacing up so that those are a little closer together. So something like that. And then just to add a little bit extra, I added like a little green vine here, which I can do by going back up to elements and this time going ahead and just looking for vine. So I'm just gonna put a vine. And so all different sorts of vines that you can pick from, things hanging down that sort of look nice and you can pick any of them that you like and play with them. Oops, 
Mm, that one's too big. I think I went with this one. This one here. And I can shrink it down. Kind of put it in the corner, something like that. And I can even go ahead and hit uh, control in my left bracket will bring it to the back so that it goes behind that. And that is how you can go ahead and, you know, pretty easily create that, um, that mock-up thumbnail. And so you would then go ahead and save this image. And that is what you would go and upload to your listing. So then I go over to, of course, my listing. And that is just one of the thumbnails that I uploaded here. And so you can see how that would look. And then for each of these, that is really easy. And I'll just show you with one so you don't have to see them all. But I just took the individual um, tumblers and put them on whatever simple backgrounds I wanted. So coming back here, I've got, let's say this background, which I thought looked nice. And what I would do is just eat, do one of these, um, do all the tumblers one at a time. So let's say I wanted to take, um, whatever this pink one, I can go ahead and by the way, hit control D and duplicate it. That way I can, you know, keep it with the background remover. I don't have to do that again. <laughs> and then I can just stick it right there. Um, I can bring it down a little bit there too. So I can do it something like that. If I wanted to even add a drop shadow onto it, I could go up to edit photo and I can come down to shadows. I can come down to drop shadows and I can go ahead and you know, make it pretty blurred, something like that. Make it kind of small, be a little less blurred. So yeah, something like that. And you can play with the intensity there too. So just a little bit of a drop shadow or big drop shadow angle. I can kind of have it go down more and you know, you can play with it, but there you go. So that's how you can put a little shadow on it if you wanted to. And if that adjusts the size of your, you know, tumbler, you can play with it there too. And boom, and then I would just save each one of these for each color. So I would say this is the pink one, and then I would do it again for each. And all I have to do if I wanna keep making copies would be to go ahead and go to duplicate page, and then get rid of that tumbler, come down to the next color, whatever it is, hit control D so I duplicate it, and I can bring it right back up and boom. So here's my next tumbler. And so I just go through those one at a time until I get my mockups for each individual color. If you want each individual color shown and then you go up to your Etsy page and you just upload them here, just like that. Um, and you don't have to, by the way, upload every color because you do have all of the colors shown here. So if you only want to upload one or two, you can do that so it doesn't get to be so you know, you'll kind of run out of colors. I think you'll run out of upload spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. So if you had seven plus the main image is eight plus this one is nine plus this one is 10, you could do that. You wouldn't have room for your, um, you know, shop logo, but you could put all of the colors plus the main image and those two up there and you would use all of your slots. So, you know, just depending on, on how you want to use your slots. So I know that was a really long video and I hope I covered everything because I do always get a lot of questions about these. But that is how you would create the listing, create the design, create the mockups, upload the mockups, make the listing customizable. And then as soon as you get an order, it'll tell you what the person wants. And then all you would have to do then is go over to your Printify shop, go to your orders and then you would just edit that order and put in the new print file for that person's name, which you would easily do just by going back to your original design file and editing it for their name. So I think I covered all of that. If you have any other questions, drop it in the comments section below. I'll try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Thank you for hanging in there on such a long video, but I do hope you guys got a lot of use out of it. If you got stuck anywhere, you can always go back and rewatch it um, and, and try to figure it out. A lot of times the easiest way to learn these things is just to play with them until you figure it out. So I hope you guys are doing great with your quarter one and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.